disrupt closure without sufficient notice, leaving customers frustrated. The Wheatley J. Grant Empowerment Center officially opened in Hunters. And the Free National Movement reflecting on its first year in office during a church service. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina Roll parkinson As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news, a local bank coming under fire tonight. Customers and clients of CIBC First Caribbean lamenting their frustrations on the bank's abrupt closure today until further notice due to remedial work. Tonight, our Megan Shepard spoke with those customers about this major inconvenience. Clients of CIBC First Caribbean Bank on Grand Bahama arriving to a grave inconvenience on Monday as they met yellow caution tape bordering the steps to the entrance and an industrial sized dumpster sitting in front of the building. As residents attempted to do their banking, they were informed by the security guard that the bank will be closed until Wednesday as repairs are currently happening on the inside. Client Donna Lang Jones says that this closure is a major inconvenience, especially for her international clients. Well, I just came to the bank's parking lot and I noticed that it seems empty. I see these caution cords are out front. I'm, I wasn't aware that it was going to be closed today and not closed for the next three days. And I'm actually here to do some banking and it's going to be very inconvenient for me and for my clients that I'm working with today so it's very unfortunate and I was really not aware and I was in here last week and did not notice that it was going to be closed and it's going to be an inconvenience and it's something that they will not un they will not understand because it's not acceptable as far as they're concerned and it's some it's very unfortunate for me doing business I see other people are coming here so they obviously didn't know businessman Dennis Knowles sharing those sentiments he notes that there was no prior notice given to clients as to the impending closure I found the place closed. They told me that it's closed until Wednesday. What's going on? There was no notice uh, given or anything else. It's very scary. <laughs> I can't do business. Hey, eh? I can't deposit. I can't withdraw. I can't send drafts. I don't know what. I don't know what to expect. All I can hope is that somebody sorts this out. At least tell us what's going on. Give, give us some options. So no, it's very saddening. Client George Ward says that the closure is an inconvenience he was not anticipating, but he will attempt to make use of the ATM. I can't pay my people. See, I got check, I just get it. I can't pay my people. I don't know why they want to close the bank on, on Monday. You know, that's about it. That's all I don't, I don't, if I don't have to come here, I'm banking, because I, I, I could go in there, but I can't go in there today. I got to cash this. Now, the ATM at the East Mall branch is still up and fully operational. A sign posted on the entrance at the ATM section also directed clients to other instant teller locations, including in Port Lucaya, Solomon's Lucaya and Queens Highway, and Municipal Motors. Megan Shepard, Sedanas Network News. Switching gears now, social and economic development on tap for communities within the Southern District of Grand Bahama as a stable in that area is revived. The YMTA in Hunters, which was established some 50 years ago, encountered some challenges in recent years, but after a major renovation project, the community center was relaunched this past weekend. The Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama and the Deputy Prime Minister were on hand for the occasion. It was a time of unity and celebration as the center, which had fallen into a state of disrepair following Hurricane Matthew, was officially reopened and renamed the Whitley J. Grant Empowerment Center on Saturday. Member of Parliament for Central Grand Bahama, Aaron Lewis, says that this move is all about empowerment and the center, which provides young people with various opportunities through sports, education and other avenues, will continue to do just that. The level of beauty is what I see in you. The level of cleanliness, the manicured lawn, the basketball course, this is because I believe in you. This will be turned over to you to manage. This is the first. I expect you to be responsible custodians. You take care of it. You show that you have pride. You now come here, get your peddler's license, have your events, do your fundraisers, put money in your pocket. 
And then after you would have done that, look out for your fellow man. The center can also boast of creating the first smart park in the region with the installation of an omni-flow device consisting of several components, including a built-in router with free Wi-Fi for the community through the assistance of IQ Energy. I hope this will inspire others to uh, see the future. This is what the country is moving towards, uh, being able to communicate, having uh, kids come out in the evening, do their homework over the internet. So I, I think it's a positive step in the future. And I hope that uh, we're able to do much more and, and throughout the communities here and in the Bahamas. Officially opening the community center was the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance K. Peter Turnquest, who notes that the government believes in creating wholesome spaces for young people. This is going to be a safe haven for these young children. This is going to be a place where they can come and learn, where they can come and experiment, where they can come and play in a safe, secure environment. And that is an admirable aim. It is also going to be a place where they can learn new skills, where they can be engaged in productive pursuits to help them with their homework, to help them with issues that they may have in their homes. And I am sure that Urban Renewal will participate to help them identify and to help and to assist with some of the needs that they may have. The various sections of the park were also unveiled, like the basketball court, which is now named in honor of Fletcher Lewis Jr., a native of Hunters who was able to advance to the finals in the men's long jump at the 1976 Olympics. The Wheatley Grant Empowerment Center is named after one of the founding members of the YMTA, which was founded some 50 years ago, and the playing field was named after the late Bernard Tampa Russell, who was also a founding member of the group. This past week, the governing Free National Movement marked one year since winning the 2017 general election by a landslide victory. On Sunday, the party celebrated this anniversary in the House of the Lord. Megan Shepard reports. Members of Parliament, government officials and supporters of the governing Free National Movement worshipping at the Church of the Ascension to give God thanks as they celebrate one year in office. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable K. Peter Turnquest notes that it was indeed a pleasure to return to the same church in which they celebrated their historic victory on May 10, 2017. I want to thank all of you who would have supported our party who would have participated in the elections of 2017, who continue to encourage, to pray for, and to support this government. No doubt we have a number of challenges before us. Our first year has been marked with some disappointments, but it has also been marked with tremendous achievements and success. The deputy leader taking the opportunity to ask the congregation and community for their continued support and prayers. He says that brighter days are ahead for this country and this island, but is asking the community to continue to partner with the government. We look at the challenges that lay before us as opportunities. And I know that Grand Bahama is going to reap the benefits of the hard work the seeds that have been sowed over the last year. And so I ask you to continue to pray for us, continue to encourage and to support this government, continue to pray and support each other as we continue to work together to build and to bring new birth to our island and to our country. Megan Shepard, CNS Network News. In news from the crime beat, police need your help in locating three Grand Bahama men. The first is Omar Roll of Sea Grape H. Malwalk. He is wanted for making threats of death. Roll is 42 years old, 160 pounds, 5 feet 6 inches tall, dark brown eyes and dark brown complexion. Police say he is considered dangerous and should not be approached. The second suspect is 51-year-old Raymond Moxie of H. Malwalk, who is wanted for questioning on the charge of shop breaking and stealing. Moxie is of dark 
dark brown complexion with dark brown eyes, average built, 180 pounds, 5 feet 9 inches tall. Police say Moxie is also considered dangerous and should not be approached. The third suspect, 22-year-old Jeffrey Simmons Jr., who is wanted by the Central Detective Unit for unlawful sexual intercourse. Simmons is described as 5 feet 8 inches tall with dark brown complexion, dark brown eyes, average built, and about 150 pounds. Simmons also has a thin mustache with a goatee beard and a low haircut. Police say his last known address is Pinedale 8 Mile Walk, and if you see him, you should approach with caution. Now, if you have any information on the whereabouts of all three of these men or any of these men, you can call 911-919 or your nearest police station. Police officials discovering illegal ammunition and dangerous drugs on Grand Bahama. According to reports, shortly after 11 a.m. on Friday, May 11th, Drug Enforcement Unit officers acting on information went to Alcesta Road and conducted a search of an area where they discovered in a black plastic bag 50.9 millimeter rounds of ammunition and 50.40 rounds of ammunition. In the second incident, while in the area of Drake Avenue, officers acting on information conducted a search of a track road in Bush where they discovered two clear plastic packages and a bag containing suspected marijuana. Now, the estimated weight is about 60 pounds with a street value of $6,000. There were no arrests made in these matters and police are actively investigating. Stay with us. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues. But first, the Grand Bahama Homecoming Committee is hosting its first concert this Saturday. And tonight you can win a free ticket by just answering this question. What is the name of Tyrus Riley's first debut album? If you have the answer to this question, you can log on to our Facebook page. Be the first to answer and we will announce the winner at the end of tonight's newscast. Good luck and once again we said that the question is what is the name of Tyrus Rally, Rally's debut album? If you have that answer once again go to our Facebook page, log on and if you are the first person to answer you will be the winner at the end of tonight's newscast. Stay with us the Bahamas tonight the Northern Edition continues right after this.